In today's video, I'm going to talk about a couple variations in this very popular 914 exchange move in the cross opening. If we bring the position back to the start, the cross, as most of you know, begins 1115, 2318, 811, 2723, 48, and then 2319. This is the characteristic opening formation in the cross. I've covered 1014, which is probably my favorite line to play, and it's popular as well. But this 914 is also popular, and I've seen it played a lot both online and in tournament play. There are many traps in this variation and in this line of play, and I will highlight a number of them in these two variations. Let's run it back to the start so you can see the first variation I want to cover. So again, the cross, of course, begins like this, and then the characteristic landing after 914. The best play for white here is to commit to a flank attack. If red at this point decides to play 6-9, white can go 25-22, 9-13, 26-23, 1-6, and we're in, into a variation of the old 14th. So that's one way you can transpose like that. But instead, typically, the center advance is usual. For white, going 26-22 to put some pressure on this piece is best. First variation I'm going to cover here is this aggressive 18 to 23 move. It's very good and I've seen it played online quite a bit. White has two attacks at hand. It can either play 1915 for the double exchanges or I find the 20 to 18 move to be a bit more restrictive. Red can actually play this radical looking 1216 to draw or probably just as good this 1116 and probably a bit more natural. So white is going to jump. Red jumps two back and then white makes the center exchange capture. Red is going to go 1620 in hopes to spring a trap here. The natural looking 3127 move will lose and I'll pause to see if you can see how Red can execute this trap. If you can't see the trap, that's okay. It's a little hidden. What Red is going to do is play 1014. So pitching this piece here, and White must jump. Now Red is going to play 1-5 because white has to jump again in line for a double jump. And now red takes the double jump. And now this piece is trapped and red is going to win the game. So a very pretty trap if 3127 is played. Let's bring it back here. So instead of 3127, it's best for white to just start developing 29-25. This 18-15 is okay. It gives red some edge. It's okay, though. But 29-25 is best. So now we can exchange off a piece. And at this point, red is going to go 2-6. If white develops 21-17, we have some really beautiful tactical play here for both sides. Red is actually going to pitch 23-26. And the reason Red does that is now it can safely play 8-11 without the fear of this 1915. If White plays 1915 now, Red has the double jump. 
after 811, white is going to pitch a piece of its own with 1714. Red takes the capture. And then white is going to squeeze this piece. So red must go out of the way with 1722. White is now going to attack the piece on 11 with 1915. And red is going to cover up. Another great tactical play here is this 15-10 move. Red, of course, cannot go 7-14 because of the double jump. So red must go 6-15. to 15. And then we have another squeeze here, pitch and squeeze for white with 23-19. So red has to do something about this right now, and it goes 7-10. And then we have the finishing touches here for white with 18-14. And then, of course, this capture first. This piece is being trapped by this red backstop piece. And then red can go in for a king. White takes the jump, and we have a really beautiful drawn game. Let's go through another variation in this 914 line of play. And as I bring up the cross opening, I do want to highlight that there have been books dedicated to the cross. And I recommend if you're interested and exploring it more to check out these books. There are some resources available online and hopefully you'll be able to find out some ones that are dedicated just to the cross. It's a great opening to play and this 914 exchange variation is just one of many. So starting with the flank here with 2217, 1518, 2622, and then as I mentioned previously, this aggressive looking 1823 attack, or probably the more natural 1115. After 1115, white goes 1713. It may be tempting to play this 1417, but this will lose. So instead, 711 must be played, not 811, because you have 2420, and then the two for one there. So instead, 7-11. White continuing to pack in with the flank here with 22-17. And then it's best for red to wait with 2-7 at this point. 32-27 is a great move. And I'm sure many of you are thinking, oh my goodness, look at the hole here. All red has to do is go 11-16 and steal a piece or two. And that's exactly what white wants in this position. If 11-16 is played, white can go 27-23, forcing this jump, and then playing this surprising 13-9. If this jump is taken, white is going to get in the back row and wreak havoc. If the double jump is played, White now has the triple jump, and hopefully you all can see that here. And the king. Red jumping back. And then after 24-20, for example, the red can go in for a king now. But then white will win by backing with 2-6 because this piece is now trapped. So let's go back before 11-16 is played and see what the correct sequence of moves are. Okay, we're back in this position. So after 32-27, again, red cannot go 11-16 because that springs the trap. So again, red must wait with 1-5. Now at this point, white can exchange off safely with 24-20. And then red can begin, again, the natural developing move toward the center of the board. Checker cycle, when he covered this variation, he showcased this 27-24 move, which is very good as well. And I recommend you check out his video, and you can find it in the description below.
Instead, I'm going to talk about this 27-23 move. Now, if red jumps this piece, white can just go 23-19 and wreak havoc with this elbow. It's still a good draw. But instead, I'm going to showcase this jump instead, the 18-27 jump. At this stage in the game, it's best for red just to go 15-18, and then white take the 2 for 2 with 19-15 here, and it's a good draw game. However, if red wants to try its luck a little bit here, and be a little bit more aggressive, it can wait with 7-11. White is going to develop 30-26, and 15-18 once again. Instead of going 19-15, White is going to play 26-22. 7-11, is the key move to draw, but if red plays 11-15 next, there is a very pretty tactical sequence here. After 26-16 and 3-7. I'll pause here for a moment to see if you can see how white can win the game at this point. The sequence to win is by playing 13-9, followed by 24-20, now white capturing here, if red makes the 12-19 capture first, white goes in for a double jump and a king, so red is going to make this capture first. And now white is going to get the king, and it must jump 12-19. to And now white has a double jump and the win for a really beautiful tactical sequence. Let's go over that variation again, but this time you can see it from Red's perspective. So again, the cross, 11-15, 23-18, 8-11, 27-23, 8 and then 23-19. Characteristic development here. After 9-14, And now, going with the flank defense is best. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty-six, twenty-two, eleven, fifteen, seventeen, thirteen, seven, eleven, not eight, eleven, twenty-two, seventeen. And then the waiting move with. 2-7, and then the deceptive 32-27, hoping that red will go 11-16, which will lose by the tactical shot there. So instead, waiting with 1-5 is best, and then safely exchanging now with 24-20. After 11-15... I like this 27-23 move. And again, if the 15-24 jump is played, then white can go 23-19 next with the same threat. And then instead of asking for complications with 7-11, as you saw with that previous tactical shot, it's best just to go 15-18. And then after 19-15, There's still some play here left, but it's a good solid draw. So again, there is a lot of wonderful play in this opening.
And if you are interested at all, I recommend finding some of that literature for not only this variation, but the opening as a whole. I also want to pause and give a thank you to Bob Newell from The Checker Maven. He conducted an interview with me, and it was published today on his Checker Maven website, which you can find in the description below. We discussed my history with checkers, how I got interested in the game, this channel, and just my overall views on the game itself. Hopefully you'll like it and you'll find a little bit more insight into my history with the game. Thanks, as always, for watching.